coming back to the atomic bomb, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of how it works. If you imagine this is the Earth, and that's the crater of the Earth, now we've got a bomb site here, same Euro or one of the southern ones, and we've got the Sun, if you imagine the Earth is circul circulating, it's rotating, and it appears the Sun is crossing across the face of the Earth. Now, if you imagine this, the Sun is moving across, moving across, and we've set up here a spherical triangle on the Earth's surface. Now that line there is a longitude line and that line there will be a, a great circle track line which has got a slight curve in it. And um, now if the distance from the bomb site to there say, just to make one sort of demonstration, was 269.5766 minutes relative to the equator and that one was another harmonic in minutes, and that one was another harmonic in minutes. It matched all these values. Now, imagine the sun moving through, and this is all set up, the bomb is armed, and uh, ready to go. But they need one more harmonic to, to detonate it. So, imagine the sun, as soon as it hits that point, that whole spherical triangle is harmonically tuned to that site. Uh, now, let, let's uh, apply that to an aircraft with a bomb load on it. It goes through the same situation. In the Nagasaki case, we've got uh, missed out on one of those, so it has to circle to come into that time zone again. So it's circling around a high altitude, waiting for the time to start moving in to be at their point there where they have to be, where the, uh, all the mechanisms are all uh, calculated for, and then it's timed in there, and that exact point, that's when the bomb drops over Nagasaki. So uh, this works the same when they do it on the ground or an aircraft. All the timing's got to be perfect. So what they're doing, when they drop that bomb, uh, uh, well actually the bomb will be dropped slightly before that point because it, they'll detonate and while it's, they'll drop it and while it's dropping down, when it hits that point, that's when the sun has moved there and all these things have to occur at the same time. So it's all timed from the uh, instant of dropping the bomb to when it will uh, arrive at the point where the sun is directly overhead on that thing. And it's, uh, it's fairly complicated when you think of all, these are all the things I've got to do to detonate a bomb. So um, if they're thinking about these suitcase things, well, how do they cope with all these different things and all the backups you've got to have to do it? And uh, I don't think, it, it, it could be done, but it'd be so damn complicated. Um, they'd know all about it, I think, before it ever happened. I've got another table here that uh, connects the uh, magnetic fields of the Earth, both those fields, to the light harmonics and also directly down to connect with the uh, classical figures in gravity acceleration. Now if you uh, study this diagram, you'll see that there are two fields shown and uh, the two fields are in lines of force for a square geodetic inch. Geodetic inch. Now in uh, the the lot, uh, higher one, we've got 12245.69798 lines of force per square, square geodetic inch, and the other one we've got 8317.32698 geodetic inch uh, per square. So the difference between those two is 39283711, which gives you the difference of the fields. It's the same on the antimatter side, exactly the same. Then you add those two fields together, you get the figure of 20563.02495, both sides, matter and antimatter. Now, if we combine those two in the equation, we get a value of 41260499 harmonic squared. We've got uh, 16913519.83 squared. And you've got 28606.1536. Now, that's twice the speed of light at that uh, particular latitude, which is the pole, which is zero.